Hello everybody and welcome to Cloud Built. What is Cloud Built? It is a parkour style game made by the developer Coilworks and published by Rising Star Games. It's currently on Steam for about 20 bucks if you want to pick it up and I highly recommend that you do. It's got a meta score of 72 out of 100 which goes to show that scores are bullshit just in general. So any score you see, yeah, just tell them, what's, what's the term? Oh yes, fuck you, Frank. And if you get that joke, congratulations. Anyways, let's take a quick look at Cloud Built. As you can see, it's got a cell-shaded cell style kind of look to it, kind of like Borderlands, but a little bit more stylized. Uh, at first, I wasn't liking it. I didn't like the look of it. But it's grown on me over time, and I am starting to like it again. Take a quick look at the options. What we got? We got something that you don't see in very many games recently. We have a field of view slider. And it's about a 99 halfway. This is the default thing. I did not fiddle with this. And it's a third-person game, yet it's got a field of view slider. So, yeah, there we go. So we have tutorial pauses game. That's insanely useful if you're playing this for the first time ever. You can't, th this game is very, very fast paced. So you can't be reading what the tutorials are saying at the same time you're playing the game. So pausing the game to read the, tor to read the tutorials is very useful. Hide timer until level is cleared. It's a timed based game as well as very fast paced game. And the timer can get a little distracting so you can hide it the first time you play the level. Very useful. Video settings, we have resolution, we have the basic resolutions, and we have a few strange ones. Like, I recognize that one, that's a 16 by 10 at least. Uh, 16 by 12, which is an odd thing. 16 by 12, that's four by three. Four by three goes up that high? <laughs> Whatever. People still use four by three? Yeah, I don't know. But it goes the whole way up to 1920 by 1080, not any higher. At least on my screen. Now that I think about it, it might be that it only goes up that high because my output only goes up that high. It might be smart enough to know that. But I doubt it. Anyway, so windowed mode, we have the options of windowed, borderless, which I never figured out a reason for, and full screen. Now, I do want to say this. I may never have figured out a reason for Borderless, but apparently a lot of people have. So it's a good thing that it's in there. I never use it, but apparently other people do. V-Sync. That will synchronize the frames per second of the game with the refresh rate, the hertz, of your screen. Um, now, when they say hertz, they just mean this is the frame rate. This is what your TV runs at no matter what. Uh, my TV or your screen. I keep saying TV because that's what I use as a monitor. My screen runs at 60 hertz, so 60 frames per second no matter what. So that's why if you're running on without VSync and without any kind of FPS lock, like the next option, you might know some frame stuttering even though you're running at a really high frame rate. It's because the frames don't match up with the refresh rate and it can cause issues. That's why VSync is there. I always have that disabled because I found that it seems to cause more problems. But that's my own personal experience. Your mileage may vary. Same with FPS lock. Draw distance. That's how far away objects will render in the background. Smaller draw distance, the closer things will render. Further draw distance, the furthest, obviously. Effects draw distance. Same thing as draw distance except with special effects. Light draw distance, same thing, just with lights. To be honest, I've never seen a game actually give three separate options for draw distance. That is cool. Uh, texture quality, high, medium, low, very low. Not very detailed. But, you know, I'm not one of those super fancy gamers who actually knows what all these things mean and everything like that. It's simplified. Perfect for me. If you're one of those really insanely hardcore gamers, you might want a little bit more fidelity but yeah it's not for me and anisotropic filtering now i used to think that i knew what it was it was 
Originally, I thought it was supposed to smooth out the jaggies, but as we can see from here, well, there's still plenty of jaggies on the diagonal lines, so I don't know what that's for. However, if you actually look at the Cloud Built logo back here, it looks incredibly smooth, at least for me. So, I don't know. The jaggies here might be a stylized option. Not 100% sure. Audio. Master volume. Volume of everything. Game volume. Well, the game sound effects. And probably the voiceover sounds as well, or voiceover volume as well. Music volume is what you hear in the background. The music. The awesome music that... You know, if, play the game just for the music. I mean, it's worth it, though. You could probably pick up the soundtrack in there. I'm not 100% sure about that, though. I'm going to be looking into it because I have every intention of buying the soundtrack. Uh, overall mute button. Not 100% sure why that's there. I mean, you just turn the volume down the whole way, but mm, you know what? Whatever. Language. And these are for the subtitles and the prompts. You can have a bunch of different languages. Obviously, I'm going to go with English because I'm not bilingual. Well, okay, technically I am bilingual. I speak two languages, English and bad English, and that's about it. Audio device. Now, this is like nostalgia for me. The only other time I've ever seen a video game actually give me the option of picking what audio device to output was way back in the DOS days, like Doom and Wolfenstein and that kind of stuff when the game had to control the sound card and you had to pick your sound card in when you set up the game it's the only other time i've ever seen this not 100 percent sure why you would need this but i can see the possibility that there are reasons i can't think of any reasons but i can see the possibility so it's kind of cool that that's there controls now this is also something that it seems to be missing from a lot of games Completely, 100% rebindable keys. Very useful. In fact, I did rebind the boost button here. It used to be the control button, and aim used to be boost, or aim used to be the right mouse button. I switched them because it's just a lot easier for me to play the game that way. Still, it's kind of hard to coordinate all of the movements, jumping, shooting, and boosting all at the same time. I still have problems doing that, but switching the boost over to the mouse was just very useful for me. We have the standard Wasad controls. We got standard space for jump, uh, left control for releasing grip, like if you're holding onto a ledge, aim with the left control, but again, I just reset that myself. We got shoot with the mouse left button, standard stuff. Restart level L, restart checkpoint R, you're going to need those. I'm not kidding when I say that. You're going to need those. Switch shoulder. This is a third-person game. And it tell basically, it's which shoulder you want to be looking over. And that's really cool. And the standard E for use. We have the standard sensitivity, mouse settings. We have a Y-axis modifier percentage. Which, if I had to guess, the Y-axis, uh, it's the percentage of sensitivity for the y-axis so you can have a different sensitivity for one direction as opposed to the other which is kind of cool uh we have the standard invert axis and the y-axis axis not access x axis so in case you're used to flight simulators that kind of thing and you want to invert one of your axes which is really kind of cool we also have gamepad controls which are also fully customizable that's cool I, however, do not be. I will not be using the game pad because for a game like this, which is has elements of a third-person shooter, I always use the mouse. I, I not good with the game pad. Uh, there are things that you can you know set to make them better. Uh, like you can set your dead zones, sensitivity, the Y modifier for the sensitivity, the aim exponent, which I believe is like aimbot. Uh, normalized movement, which smooths things because the joysticks can get a little uh, finicky, to say the least. Weapon auto charge. Uh, there are two styles of weapon. You can ho you can just fire your weapon, or you can hold and charge it. Weapon auto charge I can see would be useful when it came to a gamepad. Uh, camera directional bias, which makes it so the camera moves. You know when you're not telling it to. 
I could definitely understand that being useful. Snap dash directions, something similar for when you're dashing. Alright, so let's actually get into the gameplay and actually do something cool with this. Uh, you have a choice between continue and new game. Now, if you use new game, it wipes your game completely. So you can have one save name, that's it. There's no load option, which is a little disappointing, but that's okay. Considering how this game is made, yeah, that's, uh, that is actually kind of okay. Um, so you can have, like I said, we can continue or we can have a new game. The new game is straight up new game. It wipes all of the data previously. The only thing it doesn't wipe is the things that it can't wipe, the Steam achievements. And that's fine. But it does wipe everything else, so... I'm not going to be clicking that, I'm going to be clicking continue. Now when you start out the game, you start out in the tutorial section, and it walks you through the basics of it. But this is the central hub for the game, basically. What you get is, well, what appears to be, well, I don't know what the hell it's supposed to appear to be, it's just a room to me. But apparently it's like a hospital room. And that person in the bed is you. Your the blue is like an out of body experience kind of thing. I'm I'm not fully understanding the story. I get the general gist of it. Basically, what happened is she's a soldier and was injured in combat. And I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think she's missing her hand. Though that is a very fat cast, and she has very skinny arms especially for a soldier. Uh, so her hand might just be in the cast. I can't tell for 100% sure. But apparently she's uh, going through recovery, uh, like cybernetics or something like that. I'm not fully... Like I said, not fully understanding the story. I can imagine that I'm going to have to play this game like four or five times through to understand. But uh, over here, you have the story, basically. The different pieces of the story that you get between levels which is really useful that you can come here you can click on things and you can reread the story very useful but uh when you go over to your pot body you get the access the level selection i actually had to read that to keep that straight in my head because i had a dyslexic dyslexic moment all right so we'll go into the level selection and in here, there are different paths you can take. Uh, this path is uh, remix levels, basically taking a bunch of other levels, putting them together, something they've been adding recently to the game, and that's really cool, not related to the story. And from what I can tell, there are four paths you can go down. First off, once you, you, you have to do the initial entry level, and you get to pick your paths after you beat that. So let's start with actually playing the initial entry level and get into some actual gameplay. All right, so it shows you your rank times. You have to be a minute 25 to get A rank, 210 to B rank, 350 to C rank. I'm probably not gonna be doing it because I'm going to be explaining the game. Up at the top there, you see our timer, and the plus however many seconds is when you die. In the upper right, that weird C thing, uh, those are caps. Not sure if they stand for anything, but that's what they are they well i should say i'm not sure if cap stands for anything like it's acronym or anything i do know what they do though they are the amount of times you can restart okay the, basically it, if you fall off the edge if you die if you trap yourself and you can't get anywhere and you restart you lose one of your caps if you run out of caps you have to restart the level from the very beginning the yellow bar at the bottom that is the boost and i will show you that in a moment underneath that is the bullets that's how many shots you have before you have to reload obviously you reload so it's not a problem they don't the, it reloads automatically you don't have to reload the blue on the right that is your health that is non-regenerative health so beware so let's get started so what is this game basically it's like mirror's edge but with a jetpack and you can wall run and boost and almost fly. Uh, come on. Damn it. I always fail at the double jump. Whoop. Whoop. 
Whee! These yellow things here regenerate your boost bar. Ooh. And they're really useful when you're asked to scale walls. Because you have to use your jetpack. You can only go up just so far on foot. Just like you would expect. Yeah. They're also very useful when it comes to doing really long wall runs like this. Whee! All right. Now, that blue bar that's or that blue that's there, that is just a like a shield kind of thing. You have to do a charge blast to get through it. There's one of our enemies. When the yellow shield is up, you can't do crap. You have to wait till it comes down before you can kill him. That actually is a problem later on in the game. These wall things here, they don't like hurt you. They don't attack you or anything. They just won't let you pass. You have to take them out before you can pass. And they only take a couple shots, so it's nothing really major. Whee. But you have to take them out, or like I said, you can't pass. Uh, these blue things here are for health regen. You just grab them, you regenerate some health. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the basics of the game. And what you gotta do is you gotta learn a bunch of different moves that you can do and combine them to do a bunch of different things. Like we got a wall jump, run, jump. Whoop. And I just boosted there because it's actually kind of a habit for me. Whee. Now this is one of the simpler levels. I mean, it's the intro level just to basically teach you how to play the game. So it's far less complicated than some of the latter levels. But it does teach you the basics of what you need. Whee! Oh, what the hell? I broke the game! I went so fast, I broke the game! I can't get out. What the hell? Oh, that's not cool. Ah. Oh, well, that actually kind of sucks. Um, normally when you get to your door into that green light there, it kind of ends the game, but, um, I don't know if I went too fast or what, but I can't get through the door now. Well, let's restart from the last checkpoint. That's mildly disappointing, actually. I've never done that before. That is a first. See if we can beat this now. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I hit the end so fast that I broke the game. That's awesome. Um, I, you die once, you get a penalty times against you. As you can see, I've only made 230. I didn't make B or A or anything like that. It's be I've made A in this level before, but I have to be concentrating on it. I can't talk while I'm concentrating. And then it brings you back here and you get a little piece of the story. Wee. All right, let's just go straight back to it because we don't need, really need to go over the story. You can find that out for yourself. Now, what I think is really, really cool these paths seem to go down different paths of the story. Um, for example, going down this path is more of accepting what's happening. Um, and this one, uh, I don't know, you're turning into a cyborg or something. It's really weird. It's really weird and kind of dark. I mean, as emphasized by these very, very dark clouds. Uh, down this path is actually more of you're trying to get to the truth. You're not accepting what's going on. Um, as you can see, I can only get to this part, specifically this part in the level where you have to run down that jump, go up, and then around here, and then that way. I cannot figure out what the crap I'm supposed to do from here. It is an insanely difficult part, and it's not even the last part. I have to go through that. This side, however, uh, this part where you have to run up the walls here, I can't get past that part. I can get close, but I keep getting blown up. It's... I think it's the last level. It seems to be the last level. I'm not seeing anything else hidden in the shadows here, but whatever. Uh, however, there are four paths you can go down. 
this path seems to be more of slipping deeper into the coma. That's what I'm gathering from it. Like I said, I'm not fully understanding the story. Um, and I've never gone down this path, so I'm not 100% sure which direction that goes. Hmm. But I would also assume since the story changes dramatically depending on the path you can take, uh, I would assume that the ending also changes dramatically depending on the path that you take. But as you can see, you could take multiple paths. Now, this might be suggested because you, to get those caps, you have to beat the levels. And uh, they come in extremely handy. I mean, having a lot of caps is the only reason I got past this level. They are They get hard fast. Um, let's go down this one. I've never actually been in this one, but let's see if I can show you one of the cooler things about this game. And that is... not terribly evident right off the bat. Oh, those mirrors. Those mirrors drive me nuts. You cannot walk up them. You can only slide down them. Whee! Whoa! <laughs> there are some nasty, nasty, nasty things in this game. Uh, right there, I believe, will show what I'm trying to do. Boop. Yes, there are whoa, two paths. Multiple paths you can take throughout the game. There seems to be one where you can go that way. You can go straight this way and deal with these guys, or you can actually jump and run across those to get around them. Uh, I could run across that wall there, or I can just go this way. Oh, I hate these fuckers. I hate those guys. Ugh. Kill them, kill them now. Now, there's two paths you can go here, too. You can go straight this way, or you can go that way. Now, there's a reason you want to go that way, and that's the reason. That thing makes it really hard to get past. So I always go the other way. Because it's significantly easier to get past them. Whoa. Whoa! Oh my god, there's everything trying to kill me. Ah, and I died. Yeah, not a terribly easy game. Oh, crap. Crap, crap, crap. Oh, apparently you can go under. That's interesting. Woo! And you can get up some significant amount of speed in this game, too. Whoa! Oh, I went the wrong way. Oh. This game is not forgiving when you mess up. When you slip or you just turn just the wrong way. It is not forgiving. Like, I totally screwed up there. I went backwards instead of sideways. I gotta remember that that guy's there. Charge blast, fire, gone. Nope, missed him. Try it again. There, now he's dead. <laughs> that worked. Sometimes you can catch situations where you can just sit around and fire at things. Uh, not recommend... And they fuckers respawn, too. I hate them. Ah! No crap. Run! Damn it. That's why I wanted to run. Just keep going, keep going, because they just fucking respawn. Might not actually be worth it to fight those particular baddies. Everything's trying to kill me right now. <laughs> okay, now... Let's see if I can remember where to go. I actually don't remember where to go. I think I have to do this weird jump. Whoa! Okay. Avoid those red th shielded things, because they'll kill you, like, in one shot. And if they don't kill you in one shot, they'll just pretty much mess up your day, so you don't have to deal with... So you have to do it again. Okay, just frack and run. 
not worth it fighting those guys. <laughs> As you can see, a lot of things happen all at once. Um, oh, I didn't go high enough. Uh, ooh, I can go this way. I'm not kidding when I say there are multiple paths in this game. Let's grab that. Oh, another one of those guys. Oh, no, no! I hit the ground too hard. I hit a wall too hard. All right, well, I think we get the point, and I'm just going to exit out of the game, exit to the room, um, and I'm going to end the episode here. Now, this is an absolutely amazing game. I highly recommend you go out and play it. If you enjoyed Mirror's Edge, or if you're looking forward to the new game Hoover, pick up this game. This game is absolutely amazing. Um, if you just like speed-based games, pick up this game. This game is absolutely amazing. I highly, highly recommend it. So, I'm gonna wrap up here. I'm gonna say to you guys as always, see you in the next episode. Keep playing the game, and have fun.